Good morning mga katsibo and welcome to another episode of Straight Talk with Daily Tribune. I am Confi Manalo and joining us today is Lionheart Farms Philippines Corporation's co-founder and president to talk about their project on sustainability practices and contribution not only to the community's economic growth but also to the environment. Uh, let us all welcome Mr. Christian Eide Moller. Good morning Mr. Christian. Good morning and how are you in Manila? Uh, the weather is today is uh, it's a bit cloudy. How, how about there in Palawan? Well, it's been raining all morning, but we like that. It's good for the coconuts. Yeah, yeah, I can, uh, I can uh, agree to that. <laughs> so uh, let's start. The, let's start the questioning. So tell us about Lion Farm, Lionheart Farms Philippines. Tell us about and when and how did it started. Well, I mean, it it actually uh, started on a beach in Hong Kong. Um, uh, seven years ago, when uh, my uh, co-founder uh, Anders and I, we were literally just sitting there having lunch, and and we were deep into this conversation on the fascination of photosynthesis, and we just had come to to realize that the coconut palm is very very efficient, and um, and that 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 kind of led to a lot of questions about how how can we. How can we do something with this and how can we use the coconut palm as a way to uh, deliver sustainable development and you know we saw uh, some of the issues that are you know challenging rural communities uh, in, in in terms of development and and that became this very long voyage and we spent the next couple of years just asking a lot of questions and trying to find the answers and we started five years ago here in Palawan. And why did you, why did you choose Palawan? Because Coconut farming is uh, very uh, popular in southern Luzon, like uh, in areas of Laguna, Quezon, and Batangas. And why Palawan? Well, we, we actually looked at a lot of different places, uh, not, not only in the Philippines, but also in other, other parts of Asia where, where coconut farming is uh, thriving. Um, and, and I guess it was uh, sometimes it's just uh, faith that brings you to a certain point in life. But but I guess once we once we came to the southern part of Palawan, we knew that this was a very unique place. And obviously, uh, you know, we, we met the people here and, and we saw the, 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 the passion with which they were really uh, wanting to welcome us to the to the community and, and, and that's how we started to build the partnership together with the uh, indigenous uh, community of, of uh, Rizal. So uh, how, how big is the Lion, Lionheart Farms in Palawa? And uh, of course you're, you're well, uh, producing coconut there. So what else are you producing? What do you do with those well, coconuts? We, yeah, well, we, we, um, today we, we create work for about 1,500 people um, every day, and we've created a, a, this ecosystem in which uh, the community can participate. So, so that's not only those people that obviously uh, work directly in the farm, but it's, uh, it's also uh, you know, now this uh, evolving ecosystem where a lot of entrepreneurship can start to happen um, and, and where people can participate. Um, to become uh, uh, suppliers, uh, you know, partner farmers, and uh, and so it's a very evolving, uh, uh, you can say, uh, 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 life around uh, what what really just started as a very uh, uh, few simple planting of coconuts uh, five years ago. So at any given day, you said you are hiring fifteen thousand people. And, and no, not 15,000, 1,500. 15, so we, we, so 1, we create work sorry. for 1,500 people every day, yeah. Okay, so 1,500 people uh, at any given day. But uh, tell us about this ecosystem. What do you do there? What, what kind of products do you produce? Well, we, um, we actually um, produce products like this, which is, uh, this is a coconut amino, which is mm -hmm. uh, uh, an, a healthy alternative to, uh, to soy sauce. Um, but we also um, produce um, like a co coconut uh, flour syrup, which is uh, more or less uh, similar to honey or uh, maple syrup. So it's a diabetic friendly uh, sweetener. And why, why did we choose to focus on these products? Because the, 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 the fundamental principle of our approach to um, sustainability and the way of building a business is that we, we wanted to have this ecosystem and, and the premise for having people participate in this ecosystem is really that 
you you need to create value in order to be able to share value and yeah. and this is one of the fundamental challenges in in much of uh, rural farming uh, small smallholder farming in especially in countries like the Philippines and Indonesia <clears throat> is that uh, you, you know these farmers have uh, increasingly smaller sizes of land from which they have to um, support their families and they don't have access to markets. So, so it's all about creating this opportunity wherein uh, everyone can have a chance to participate. Where do you sell these products? Are these available now in the supermarkets? Yeah, uh, we, we, we started, uh, so this is again one of these things that makes this year so special because uh, we've been spending the last five years planting and, uh, and, and we started harvesting and we started producing this year. So um, we, we had a chance to launch our product earlier uh, into uh, local supermarkets, um, uh, Lazada, Shopee. Uh, and, and obviously that's a continuing effort now to, to try and make the product more available. But at the same time, I think uh, it's also important to understand that uh, it's really the, the global markets that we need to connect with uh, in, in order to, uh, you know, support the, the continued level of scale of development that we need uh, in order to make this uh, approach work. So you mentioned that you launched the products this year and you started distribution of these products as well this year, but we are in the middle of the pandemic. So how, how is that pandemic uh, challenge your distribution and, uh, and selling of this product? Well, um, I mean, first of all, I think the, the pandemic has been um, obviously a challenge for all of us, and and, and part of our uh, you know focus during this time has really been how to keep you know our families safe, uh, you, you know our people that 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 work with us, and you know the the community uh, you know at large. And there were a lot of challenges, especially in the early part of the pandemic especially with regards to, you know, we are in a very isolated place and we, we depend on a, a global supply chain. So even just getting things through, uh, you know, imports, uh, packing material. So, I mean, these, these bottles uh, and, and a lot of labels and things that we use, they, they are, are, you know, uh, produced in China as, as an example. Um, they're not necessarily all available, uh, you know, in the Philippines. And, and so that has obviously been a huge challenge. But then also uh, we had to re-innovate the way of communicating with customers because, uh, you know, in terms of the um, distributors, uh, supermarkets, et cetera, because we can't go and meet with them in, in person anymore. So we've had to, um, and, you know, I think this is what the whole world has done, has, re has, has sort of reinvented itself in terms of how we establish uh, connection with each other and obviously using Zoom like what we're doing now is, is one of those ways. And, uh, and this has been, uh, this has been a, a, a learning experience because also in a rural community like here, you know, telecommunications is a huge challenge yes. and uh, people uh, just, you know, uh, building those skills in a business that can communicate uh, in these ways is, is another challenge, but it's a lot of fun. How was the uh, response uh, of the consumers to your products? And do you have a, do you have a, uh, a distribution center in, in Luzon? Because you're, say, you, you mentioned that uh, the, your products are available through Lazada, but uh, if you will be ordering, say, from Manila, uh, and then the, the supply will be coming from Palawan, that would be a challenge in logistics and the expenses would be much higher. So do you have, do you have distribution centers in, in Luzon? Well, um, I mean, obviously, if you want to do local distribution in the Philippines, you need to be in Manila. So, yeah, we we, uh, we ship our products from Palawan. And, and, and this is sort of another fun story because five years ago, uh, when we started here, we didn't have cemented roads for about 200 kilometers around us. And, uh, you know, even the bridges here couldn't support um, uh, if we, for a container to cross the bridges. So... Um, uh, this was really one of those, uh, you can say, big gambles that we took was uh, having a close dialogue with, uh, with the local government and, and, and being able to understand what were the plans and trust in their execution of those. And quite, quite, uh, quite happy to say that uh, today we have cemented roads and we have bridges and we're just waiting for communications uh, and, uh, you know, electrical uh, uh, power generation to improve. But 
uh, all in all, these are uh, big opportunities also to, you can say, take sustainability and, and, um, and, and really the whole way of doing things to the, to the next level, which I believe is a big opportunity for Palawan because it's uh, generally associated with, uh, you know, uh, biodiversity that's very unique for the Philippines and the world. So uh, we, we take this responsibility quite seriously. So uh, the core principle, the core uh, character of Lionheart Farm is about sustainability. So uh, tell us about your sustainable practices and uh, does it help the community and the environment? Yeah, so it, it's, it's in many ways, it's quite, it's quite a simple principle, which in some ways reminds of how we can uh, care for our own health. So I think it's increasingly understood by many people that uh, our microbiome is is very important to to our health and when it comes to any uh the production of any plants and and ultimately uh, producing products like like what we do it, it starts in the soil so uh, you were showing some pictures earlier of um, where we're making um, our bioorganic fertilizer so this is uh basically creating um the organic inputs that uh, uh, can go into the soil and, and in, inoculate uh, the uh, microbial environment to promote um, uh, this uh, uh, ability for the, for the microorganisms to convert food, should we say, that's mm -hmm. not accessible directly for the plants into accessible, uh, being accessible for the plants. And that's ultimately, you know, the, the, you can say the alternative to using um, uh, uh, what's called generally known as uh, uh, agrochemical inputs or you know uh, chemical fertilizer, etc. And the, and the, and the beautiful thing about this is, of course, that when you start to build this ecosystem where you use so many uh, ingredients, including agricultural waste uh, and and lots of other things, then you also create a lot of employment. Uh, and and you can say instead of spending your money on uh, uh, importing uh, fertilizer, which uh, you know is not produced in the Philippines, uh, then you're you're spending your money in the local community, and that that then drives a livelihood, and uh, and an appreciation and understanding of uh, how things can be done uh, locally without actually having to rely much on uh, on uh, anything from outside. That that's uh, sustainability in its uh, in its pure form when you can do more with less and, uh, and, and obviously uh, preserve and, uh, the, the natural resources. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Muller. And uh, for our next question is what, is, what is the most challenging part in doing this unique concept of Lionheart? But before you answer that question, let us, pause, uh, let us first take a, uh, a short break. Magandang araw mga katribu! Narito na ang mga makakasama nyo tuwing umaga sa programang Gising Na. Roy Pelevelo, Kompi Manalo, at Tony Lia Badilio Crisostomo, Vernon Velasco, Kim Sancha, at Chirk Balagtas. Abangan ang programang Gising Na mula alas 8 hanggang alas 9 ng umaga sa Facebook page ng Daily Tribune. Ilabas na ang mainit na kape! At samahan kami sa inyong pag-almosal, mga katribo. Sama-sama natin alamin ang mga natatagong istorya sa mga latest na kaganapan sa loob at labas ng bansa. Simulan natin ang bawat umaga with good vibes sa mga informative and recreational segments ng aming programa. Maaari nyo rin ibahagi sa amin ng inyong opinion by Daily Tribune Facebook page at Tribunal sa YouTube. Makichika na rin sa latest showbiz happenings, mga katribo. Kaya naman, magkita-kita po tayo mula lunes hanggang biyernes, alas 8 hanggang alas 9 ng umaga, at magsama-sama po tayo sa... Gising na! And you are still watching Straight Talk with Daily Tribune. And still with us is Mr. Christian Muller, 
the president and founder of Lionheart Farms in the Philippines, located in Palawan. Before we take uh, took a short break, uh, Mr. Muller was discussing how sustainability is able to impact the environment and the community of Palawan. They were able to provide jobs, livelihood, opportunities for the communities, while at the same time promoting um, envir uh, the environmental protection, like they're, they're uh, producing their own... Uh, their own, uh, uh, what do you call that, uh, fertilizers that in turn provides additional livelihood for the, for the community there. So, um, and also we, before we took a break, we left a question hanging for Mr. Muller. So, Mr. Muller, what is the most challenging part in doing this unique concept of Lion Heart Farms? Well, we're trying to make it, uh, we're trying to make it sexy. Uh, to become uh, a farmer, um, we're trying to really um, uh, get get there some excitement mm -hmm. about uh, what are the possibilities in farming, so that uh, so that we can really see the next generation and secure the platform for the next generation and and our continued food supply. So um, I, I think it's not a secret that. Uh, most of most coconut farming uh, in the Philippines is is uh, you know uh, a lot of old farmers that uh, have um, with very little replanting uh, mm -hmm. that's been going on for the for the last many years and uh, the general life and conditions of the of the Philippine coconut farmer has been has been challenged so it's it's really all about trying to help and be part of a a, a process to you can say um, uh, reinvent the coconut industry, mm -hmm. and and we're, we're obviously just providing one of, of uh, a, a number of different uh, answers to how that can be done, and we have our approach, and we see a lot of other people out there also, uh, you know, pursuing uh, other other ways in which to achieve that. But I think at the end of the day, that that's really what this is about, and that is the that is the single biggest. Uh, uh, challenge, and that is to to find a way in which to make it make it make people realize that we don't all have to live in the city, and uh, if you know food food production ultimately you know uh, comes from uh, the the agriculture areas, and and so how do we how do we improve life, and how do we connect these very rural areas? With, with global markets, which, which is obviously becoming increasingly challenging because uh, consumers are demanding uh, accountability. They want to understand where things come from and how they were produced. And they want uh, assurances with regards to the healthy aspects of the products. And, and this is quite a complicated thing. And I think the only way in which we can do this is if we work together and we develop these uh, systems. Uh, you know, we we like to use the word ecosystem, uh, wherein we can get everybody to to participate and overcome all of these uh, these different uh, challenges. Well, I like that idea of uh, making farming sexy, <laughs> because uh, in the Philippines, the the, uh, the young generations are trying are avoiding to be farmers because even the uh, the uh, the parents of they, they are discouraging their children to becoming farmers because I mean, farmers in the Philippines are mostly poor. So if you can make farming sexy, then uh, that, would, that might encourage the younger generation to take up farming again. And anyway, so what is the most fulfilling part when you started this Lionheart Farm? Well, um, I mean, I think that, that when you get to, I, it's not that I'm old, but when you get to a certain point in, in, in your life and you feel like you, um, you can say, accumulated a fair amount of experience, I would say <laughs> good and bad, then, then all of a sudden, how do, you, how do you realize when you're standing in front of a, a very unique opportunity and, and you know that this, you just have this feeling that this has potential to be something that can not only, you know, transform your own life, and uh, make you a better person, but 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 of course also where you can see that you can in a positive way impact the lives of uh, of other people, and uh, so so that that's been sort of the, the the driving force for me, and that's what that's what gets me out of bed, uh, you know, every every single day. 
Well, Lionheart is basically a, a new company. It's only been five years, and the, the last five years you spent uh, that uh, the time planting coconut, and now that you're harvesting, you're producing. So, what what's uh, what other developments are you um, looking at to further improve Lionheart's operations? Yeah, I mean, um, I, I think that a lot of our effort, and and I think we've also seen this during the uh, during the time of the pandemic. Is, is really trying to make sure that um, we can improve uh, understanding, so skills improvement, because the complexity of, of the execution of this partnership that we live in um, together with the community, because it, it really what, what we are doing cannot be done by, by any single person. And we really only get that value creation when we get to a certain scale. So we need to activate the community and, and to do that and to be able to complete all these different tasks, we need to focus on skills improvement. We need to focus on education. And, and one, of the, one of the fun things that we experienced during the pandemic was really the ability to be able to go out and even help the younger generation mm -hmm. because they weren't able to go to school. So, uh, you know, we started literally uh, having classes out in the field. And not, not only uh, teaching them the basics of... Uh, of uh, reading and writing and math, um, but also talking about how you build a life. And uh, so we've had more than 150 children that have been in this program for, for the most part of this uh, pandemic. And, um, and, and recently, um, I had this incredible experience of, of, of having them uh, being able to visit, uh, for example, our factory, our bioorganic uh, fertilizer production. And, and all of a sudden, I saw these very young people talking about wanting to come uh, to study biology, mm -hmm. uh, wanting to become a chemist. And, you know, one of the boys said, uh, oh, I, I want to drive that, uh, you know, skid loader. Uh, you know? and, and so this is all of a sudden uh, uh, giving a picture, uh, uh, visualizing for them, uh, you know, what, what is their opportunity and, and I think that makes it a lot of fun and uh, obviously is very rewarding, not only for myself, but, you know, everybody else who, who is involved in it. And, and I think that ultimately this is also what uh, consumers, because if you look into the market and you look at what is it that consumers are asking for, they, they want things that have a story. They, they want to connect with the, the, the things that, that, I mean, as consumers, we want to connect with those things that we are, that we are using. And we, we want to know that those products are doing good uh, at the same time. And I think that's really how the bar is increasing. Uh, we, consumers are becoming much more demanding and they ask a lot more questions. Uh, and, and so when you, when you go to build a business today, you really have to have the consumer at the very, very center of your, uh, of your approach and your mindset. And, and, and you need to have uh, this holistic view where you uh, don't leave anyone behind, uh, you need to engage the community and you, we have to remove the inequality and, and so forth and so forth. And this all you, all you need to do is read the uh, United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and, and there's like hundreds of business ideas there that can inspire you, even I mean, in agriculture and in a lot of other areas. How do you envision the future of Lionheart? Well, um, I mean, I'm hoping that one day, um, uh, you know, I can sit uh, under a coconut palm. You know, you have this uh, vision of uh, sitting there in the shade together with, uh, you know, some of the, the elders from the community. And we can see the next generation, uh, uh, you know, doing the work and, and they'll do their own uh, innovation. So th there is still a lot, a lot of work. Um, like you said, we've, we've only been going at this for five years and the life of a coconut palm is... It's a very long one, um, and it's a beautiful one. Uh, that's why in the Philippines you call it the the, the tree of life. And um, so we really just want to continue this voyage, and and I hope that we can also inspire uh, other communities um, to perhaps uh, follow the same uh, path, and uh, not just for uh, coconut farming, but uh, you know I'm increasingly in dialogue with uh, different people about how perhaps uh, you know, we can help in other communities, but, but also how we can inspire others to perhaps adopt a sort of similar uh, approach, uh, because I really believe that is, that is where the future is. And, mm -hmm. and there's a huge challenge in the climate. So 
um, uh, you know, just taking on uh, an active role uh, in terms of uh, resolving and helping to uh, address the climate issues is obviously uh, one of the biggest challenges um, for, for, the, for the coming years. Yeah, I can, uh, I can agree with that vision or dream of yours that you, one day we can all sit under the uh, under coconut tree or any other tree and then uh, just bond with the community or with, with our neighbors and then uh, look and uh, just dream and look at the uh, younger generation continuing our legacy. <laughs> So, uh, yeah. uh, and, I, and I think that I think that uh, you know today we live longer, mm. right? So we don't have uh, you know we don't have these sort of uh, we can't have I would say we can't have these sort of traditional ways of seeing our life ending at uh, retirement at sixty or sixty five. We we've got to go on for a lot longer, or mm. we're going to get incredibly bored. So <laughs> I, I think that uh, you know it's sort of a unique opportunity to to bring all this experience of the older generations and you know engage with the younger ones. And I I, I just am super excited about that. Well, while, while engaging with with the community and the younger ones, what do you think? What do you consider is your is the biggest asset of Lion Farms Philippines? Well, I, I, I think that uh, every time we plant even just one coconut palm, uh, I know that we are, uh, you know, creating, uh, you know, should we say, livelihood for, for, for generations. So I think that uh, when, when, I, when I see the transformation to uh, individuals, to, you know, for, for, for lots of families and for this community, I, I know that the, one of the best ways of, of doing good is is literally uh, you know planting and you know planting coconuts, uh, but but there are lots of other there's lots of other things out there uh, that you can do. We're just obsessed about coconuts, so um, yeah, plant some more coconuts and and let's get the coconut industry uh, in the Philippines to uh, become the best and most admired in the world. Uh, we have everything that we need here, and um, and if we just work together. Um, uh, we can we can really uh, realize that vision, and and I think that the definition of what our traditional uh, coconut products um, also has a lot of uh, opportunity for uh, innovation. Uh, I mean, some of it is uh, exemplified by some of these products that we do, but I'm I'm sure that there's a lot more, and I know that we have a few uh, very exciting things coming. That, that at least uh, will totally uh, redefine what what is the possibilities with uh, with uh, coconut uh, I mean raw materials from coconut um, thank you very much mr Christian Moore thank uh, for your insight and uh, the things that you're doing there in Palawan and I wish you all the luck uh, in all honesty and uh, do you have any parting words or message to our viewers and to to the uh, community of, of uh, Palawan well I think that that uh, you know, we all know what it's like to cook up a, a, a dish, right? A good dish of life, if you will. Um, mm. You know, you you can't always just follow the the recipe. Uh, that's not a guarantee for um, the, the the best outcome. You need love and you need care, and 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 you really just need to have your eyes and ears open and uh, uh, and follow whatever opportunities that life will bring you and making sure you're always in uh, dialogue uh, with others um, because that is ultimately how we find uh, satisfaction and we achieve and build great things. Thank you very much again, Mr. Moller. Um, this uh, this, uh, 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 this uh, segment, we will play a little game. We will show you some pictures that we have uh, generated from Lionheart's Instagram account. And then after we show you this picture, you will tell us the story behind that photo. Are you ready for the game, sir? Absolutely. <laughs> uh, let's show it them. Sounds uh, fun. <laughs> let's show Mr. Christian the first photo. Well, uh, yeah, this is uh, this is actually um, in our nursery, and and you see uh, all of the community uh, gathered here, and it was an event uh, of uh, of recognition of uh, some uh, achievements uh, and where we uh, you can see social distancing uh, happening so this was uh, you know last year and uh, this is obviously a very different way of uh, of getting together from how it used to be next photo 
Well, this is uh, this is actually one of my favorite places because this is uh, literally inside the nursery, and you see all the the coconut seedlings mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, germinating, and 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 basically uh, this is it's just a beautiful life under that uh, netting that's uh, there to make sure the the nuts will not overheat, and uh, these coconut palms are getting ready for planting, and then you know that it's going to do a lot of good. Next photo, please. Yeah, this is uh, this is uh, perhaps one of those things that uh, people do not immediately realize that we are doing. Uh, this is in our forest uh, tree uh, nursery. Uh, we um, plant literally thousands of uh, different uh, 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 other trees. So um, uh, all the indigenous uh, species to 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 Palawan, and uh, we're very committed to the uh, regeneration of. Uh, of forested areas and maintaining the biodiversity and we actually live by we call it a uh, net positive contribution to biodiversity so and yeah that's a, a very dear part of our project as well uh, next photo yeah this is this this is a great this is a great photo and it's even an even better story mm -hmm. this is um this is actually um production of green manure mm -hmm. so so this is a way to extract uh, nitrogen from from the air because uh, these uh, uh, plants uh, uh, and there's a few different ones, duckweed, asola, um, mm -hmm. and others uh, that we can use. And we are converting, you can say, abandoned rice fields, um, and we're using them to produce this green manure, which then becomes a component in our bioorganic fertilizer. Mm -hmm. And and this is uh, this is a specific initiative. That not only boosts our, uh, our our fertilizer, organic fertilizer, but actually is also doing very good to the to the climate. Do we have still a last photo? Yeah, uh, this is this is actually this is the harvested uh, uh, green manure. Sure. But yeah. I, I would probably use this photo as a as a way to to sort of highlight that it's not only green manure, um, but we recycle a lot of agricultural waste and. We do. We produce something called biochar, which is a way of, uh, you know, um, uh, carbonizing uh, uh, agricultural waste, and we bring it back to the soil. And this is how we create, uh, you know, CO two drawdown. And uh, as of as of this moment, we have uh, drawn down almost three hundred thousand uh, uh, tons of uh, of CO two, and and this is a very very important part of this next, uh, you can say, phase of of, of agriculture throughout and for all of us in our daily lives as to how do we how do we help to address these climate issues so yeah yeah thank you very much mr Mollen. it must be, it must be very fun be, uh, to be a uh, coconut farmer there <laughs> now um, mr Mollen, we will give you the floor to promote or um, or uh, plug your products well thank you um so first of all i i think that uh, you know these are truly, um, uh, you know, healthy, sustainable, uh, uh, traceable products. And, uh, you know, they literally embody the spirit of, uh, you know, everyone and the hard work of everyone that has participated to, uh, to create them. Um, so um, something for the sweet tongue and then something for the more uh, savory tongue and uh, lots more of, of that coming. So have have fun, enjoy the products. You can find them in uh, Lazada and uh, Shopee and increasingly in different stores around the Philippines. So thank you very much for uh, uh, joining in this. And uh, you can also go to our website, which is lionheartfarms.com.ph and uh, anyone feel free to send me a message. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm always there and will respond to all questions. Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Christian Eidmoller, the president and founder of Lionheart Files Philippines. It, this has been uh, Confi Manalo, and this is Straight Talk.